Just a 30-minute drive from the European Union's border, the sleepy village of Mingjir, Moldova was once internationally recognized, not for its world-class wine vineyards, but for the growing willingness of its residents to sell their organs. Despite a solid economic performance over the past two decades, Moldova, the land of sparkling wines, remains among the poorest countries in Europe. Even though they are being fostered with resilient measures by the rich EU nations. So how is Moldova still in poverty, being located on the richest continent? Let's analyze. Moldova suffered an economic collapse after achieving independence in 1991. Poverty in Moldova had remained high for decades with its previously weak economy and the added burden of multiple global recessions. The country continues to face the same issues. The foundation of the nation's economy relies heavily upon its people. In the case of Moldova, however, the unstable population has led to a highly volatile economy. The official population of Moldova is 3.5 million. However, estimates determine that the true figure is much lower due to a significant level of out-migration with people seeking work in other countries. The World Bank stated that this puts pressure on the pension system and limits the available labor force and the country's long-term competitiveness. As a result, poverty in Moldova will likely continue to be an issue for the foreseeable future. Decreased fertility rates are also contributing to the unstable population. The total fertility rate, TFR, at which a population replaces itself from one generation to the next, is roughly 2.1 for most countries. However, as of 2020, Moldova's rate was 1.3. As women have fewer children within Moldova, the overall population is contracting, leaving an increased share of elderly people with very few young people to care for them in the future. Over half the population lives in rural areas, and more than 40% of the economy relies on industry and agriculture. Many citizens are at risk of natural disasters. People in areas at higher risk of natural disasters also suffer from weaker economies as a result. The province at greatest risk of floods and earthquakes is at Chisinau, the region with the greatest GDP. However, since the region is also at high risk for natural disasters, this inevitably leads to a more volatile economy that takes significant hits during flooding and earthquakes. According to the World Bank, natural disasters impact up to 3% of the region's GDP, leading to a potential loss of $66 million. These events can damage arable land, create food shortages that leave people hungry, and cause people to suffer from injury or loss. Environmental challenges can significantly impact the lives of citizens and drag the most vulnerable people in Moldova into poverty. Currently, millions of Moldovans must choose between their paycheck and their health, as 60% of the economy in Moldova is service-oriented. The current global economic crisis that began as a consequence of the COVID-19 pandemic will likely continue to impact Moldova significantly. According to the World Bank, it will lead to a contraction of Moldova's economy in 2020. Assuming that the country can largely contain COVID-19 impact after 2020, estimates determine that the nation could still suffer through an economic recession of 3.1%. Back in 1998, Russia was Moldova's biggest trading partner, accounting for 60% of exports from the country that borders Romania in the west and Ukraine in the east. Two decades later, that ratio has been reversed, with two-thirds of exports from Moldova heading instead to the European Union, with which the country signed an association agreement in 2014. Just 10% of total exports now go to Russia. Moldova remains Europe's poorest nation in economic terms, with between 1.2 million and 2 million, one-third of the population, currently living and working abroad. The money they send back props up the nation's economy and supports families with little prospects at home. Our people, our immigrants, most of them are now in the European Union Western country, said Vyacheslav Ionita, an economics expert at IDIS Vitorul Institute. We have immigrants in Russia, but it's more poor people from rural areas because it's easier to go to Russia, usually for a short term. They go to Europe for the long term, Ionita explained. They're worth more to Moldova than exports. Although a growth model reliant on remittance-induced consumption has generated high growth and reduced poverty, 
It had become less sustainable well before the recent series of overlapping crises. The decline in remittances, combined with shrinking and aging population, has resulted in low productivity growth and a significant number of lower income households have become dependent on pensions and social assistance. The pandemic and the energy crisis and the refugee flows caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine starkly expose the vulnerabilities of Moldova's growth model to shocks. Moldova is one of the countries most affected by the war in Ukraine, not only because of its physical proximity, but also because of its inherent vulnerabilities as a small, energy-dependent, landlocked economy with close links to both Ukraine and Russia. The impacts of the war and price spikes have resulted in additional fiscal costs, squeezing resources for long-term development priorities. As economic activity continues to shrink due to weak investment and consumer confidence, the medium-term outlook will be influenced by the government's ability to counter the erosion of households' purchasing power while maintaining momentum in the reform program. At the current economic juncture, it is paramount that short-term recovery measures are complemented by long-term reforms that will help steer the economy away from the current economic model. The new 2023-27 World Bank Country Partnership Framework for Moldova provides key elements to support the country in its efforts to transition to a new growth model, delivering targeted activities that respond both to the immediate crisis and to address Moldova's longer-term development agenda with a goal to advance the EU agenda, especially since Moldova has been working to address and implement the conditions the European Council set forth for opening EU accession negotiation. The economy is one of the major issues in Sunday's presidential election, which pits Maya Sandu, a pro-European former prime minister, against Igor Dodon, the incumbent president. Since taking power in 2016, Dodon has taken Moldova closer to Russia at the expense of his relationship with the EU. As well as strengthening links with the EU, Sandu has pledged to fight corruption, a particularly hot topic in Moldova since as much as $1 billion was stolen from Moldovan banks in 2014 and 2015 and high-profile political figures were implicated in the fraud. No one has been convicted over the theft, and as of now, none of the money has ever been recovered. Meanwhile, the EU is doing some public relations of its own. It recently opened a new information center in Chisnau, the capital, which outlines how the EU invests in agriculture, cultural heritage, civil society, and important reforms such as fighting corruption and ensuring the rule of law. Democratic standards, including standards for the democratic process, are an important part of the values on which we agreed in our association agreement, said Peter Machako, EU ambassador to Moldova. By building resilience for the world's challenges, students in poverty in Moldova are preparing themselves for better and brighter futures. The government acted by implementing emergency measures. These should protect businesses from immediate bankruptcies after streams of a crippling demand shock disrupted supply chains and a lockdown. These measures should also help prevent unnecessary shutdowns and layoffs by providing qualifying businesses with liquidity while supporting employer retention and improving services through e-governance reforms. Through these programs, the government has protected many citizens from moving further into poverty. These measures should allow the economy to continue to grow after the recovery period is complete. Ultimately, when considering the current circumstances for Moldova, one sees both the adversities and the victories. As complex as the issue of poverty is, proper projects, education, and economic goals, poverty in Moldova should be reduced. That's all for today, so what do you think about Moldova? Can the nation expect any leap improvement in the near future? Comment down your thoughts. Do like and subscribe for more. Until next time, see you!